You're well on your way through the model of instructional design. You've completed all of your analysis and design, and you've begun the development of your instruction after having completed your instructional strategy. You've got your instructional map, your performance objectives, and your taxonomy table complete with your goals aligned, and you've reviewed your strategy. You're ready to start to put together the specific resources and materials for each of the steps. You've thought about how you're going to motivate your learners, and now you're looking to assemble instruction which will hit the mark. You've got a lot of different types of things that you're going to shoot for. Some of your objectives are teaching procedures, while others are teaching facts, concepts, processes, and principles. How are you going to choose and develop the right things? Some experts have researched and studied effective strategies for teaching specific types of knowledge. Let's take a look at some of those things the experts recommend you consider. Let's auger in on teaching now and see how we might put together solid and quality instruction which will work for our learners. Let's start by looking at teaching facts and concepts. Perhaps you faced some challenges when you were trying to place your objectives in the taxonomy table. Perhaps you were confused as to where to put some of the objectives. You might have asked yourself if this particular goal is a fact or a concept. It's not uncommon for one to have some trouble in categorizing knowledge. There is a multitude of terms that people use to describe knowledge. With the taxonomy table, Anderson and others have settled on four types of knowledge, factual, conceptual, procedural, and metacognitive. Let's start by looking at the factual knowledge dimension that Anderson defines and ask what the difference between facts and concepts is and how we might be able to develop instruction for facts and concepts objectives. Anderson and others suggest that facts are the basic elements that students must know to be acquainted with a discipline or solve problems in it. They suggest there are two types of sub-knowledge related to facts, knowledge of terminology and knowledge of specific details and elements. Some examples of knowledge of terminology may include knowledge of the alphabet or important computer terms. Examples of specific detail and elements knowledge may include facts about societies or knowledge of reliable sources for searching the internet. Instructional design researcher and specialist Ruth Colvin Clark notes that facts are unique, one-of-a-kind types of information and concepts are a mental representation or prototype of objects or ideas for which multiple specific examples may exist. For example, Colvin Clark might suggest that an example of a fact is the United States government has declared the 4th of July each year as a national holiday, whereas a concept related to the 4th of July may be people recognize and celebrate our nation's freedom on the 4th of July each year. When it comes to concepts, Clark suggests that we need to think of teaching concepts at the application level rather than at the remember level. When we see teachers teaching facts, it's often at the remember level. As a unique, one-of-a-kind type of information, a fact might be taught at the remember level. Clark suggests that with facts, each instance of the fact is identical to the next instance and so on. For example, a fact may be water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. As a fact, we would expect this to be true in every instance of where water is exposed to a 32 degree temperature. When we teach facts, Clark suggests a few things. First, she suggests we avoid writing learning objectives that ask the learner to recall facts in isolation. Instead, says Clark, Write objectives that require learners to apply the factual information. Clark also suggests that you look at your information and ask if there are multiple examples of this information that share common features but vary on irrelevant features. 
If such is the case, Clark says, it's a concept and not a fact, and you should teach the knowledge as a concept. Most importantly, we should emphasize techniques that can be used to bypass memory limitations and speed up the learning process when teaching facts. Many times when teaching facts, we fall into the syndrome of asking the learner to perform rote memorization of the fact. Instead, we might consider incorporating factual information into practice. Provide drill and practice to automate factual information when job aids are inappropriate and provide mnemonics as memory aids. Research suggests that when teaching facts, tables, lists, label diagrams, statements, and short descriptive labels can help. Anderson tells us that conceptual knowledge relates to the interrelationships among the basic elements with a larger structure that enable them to function together. Anderson identifies three subcategories of conceptual knowledge. Knowledge of classifications and categories, knowledge of principles and generalizations, and knowledge of theories, models, and structures. An example of knowledge of classifications or categories may be the types of amphibians or mammals. An example of knowledge of principles and generalizations may be the law of supply and demand. Anderson suggests that examples of knowledge of theories, models, and structures may be the theory of evolution or the structure of Congress. Ruth Colvin Clark suggests that concepts are a mental representation or prototype of objects or ideas for which multiple specific examples may exist. Concepts can be concrete or abstract. Concrete concepts have defined parts and boundaries, which can often be drawn and labeled, whereas abstract concepts are difficult to directly represent with a label diagram. Let's think about a couple of examples here. Can you come up with a couple? When it comes to developing instruction to teach concepts, consider these items. Be careful with terminology which is unfamiliar or makes assumptions. If you're teaching a procedure, examine the steps in the procedure to pull out the concepts to teach them separate from the procedure. Develop instruction which helps the learner discriminate the concept rather than try and remember the concept. Allow the learner to pick from examples when teaching concepts. Additionally, Clark suggests that we always provide a definition and provide examples of the concepts we are teaching, using both non-examples and analogies where appropriate. Complex concepts may require multiple examples with an identification of critical features. Find analogies which are familiar to the learner to teach concepts. For example, a math teacher may use a pie cut into pieces to teach the concept of percentage or portion to learners. When using non-examples, consider using Venn diagrams to show overlap of examples and non-examples. And be sure to provide the learner with practice using examples and non-examples letting the learner choose from the examples provided. If possible, use pictures for analogies. Smith and Reagan suggest that when teaching declarative knowledge, such as facts and concepts, what's most important is that the knowledge is available for retrieval to the learner when needed to be combined with new information. What resources, techniques, and methods will you use to develop instruction to teach facts and concepts and ultimately help the learner to retrieve and use the knowledge later? We've heard some ideas from Anderson and Clark. Might some of these ideas work for your instruction? Take your projects and look at those objectives which are looking to teach factual or conceptual knowledge. Apply some of the techniques that our experts suggest and you'll be in a better position to have high quality instruction.